here we go. Hi guys, welcome. Um, let's see, hopefully you can see me. Um, if not, that's fine. Uh, really all you need is my voice, right? Um, welcome to this month's ViewSonic Viewboard 101 webinar. My name is Amanda Taylor, and um, I'm going to be leading you through our content today. Um, I'm joined by uh, Tara Kazmarek. She's on the end. You won't see her face. Let's see. Um, but she's here with us. We're just making sure that all of our stuff is working on the back end. Hide. Let's see. All right, Tara, can you hear me? Perfect. All right. Um, so what you can do is, uh, if you're watching, um, down in the bottom, we've got a chat. Uh, down YouTube has chat. So we'd love for you to follow along with us, introduce yourself, um, let us know where you're coming from, um, and what type of equipment you have in your classroom. Um, and that way we can have some, some back and forth conversations. So I don't think my camera is working on that end. It's weird. Let's see, I wonder if I turn it off and I turn it back on. Hey, there it goes, now it's working. Okay, so hopefully you can see my face now, um, but then I'm gonna turn it off, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, welcome, we're so glad you're here. Um, we're thankful that you wanna spend a, a half an hour to an hour with us. Um, so like I said earlier, down below, uh, YouTube has chat. We'd love for you to introduce yourself, tell us where you're coming from, and what type of viewboard you have, what type of software you're using. Um, our particular demonstration is going to be on the My Viewboard software um, with the newest uh, updates. We just updated our board as we were getting started today. Um, so yeah, um, let's see. And Tara's on the back end. So if you hear me talking to myself, it's actually Tara in my ear. So I promise I'm, I'm not just talking to an empty room. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share this and I'm going to turn this camera off. Um, I might be back on a little bit later, but I'll go ahead and turn it off so you don't have to start a link wall on that one. All right, so today uh, is our 101 Usonic webinar uh, for uh, 2018. Uh, we do these webinars uh, once a month and um, my chat, hey Ryan. Uh, we do these webinars once a month and it's just to cover basic tools and settings for the viewboard. Um, if you have any specific questions, we can go deeper. We're gonna try to keep it short today um, to see how that goes. Um, so yeah, all right, so welcome and introductions. We've already got that out of the way. Um, and then we're gonna talk about some basic tools, answer any questions that you may have. Um, and then um, we uh, will wrap it up. So, all right, uh, the first thing we're gonna talk about is basic tools. And I'm, I'm gonna do something a little different today. We're gonna see, um, I know this may be your first time joining us, but we do these every month. So I try to do something different to see how, how we like it. So I'm gonna be demonstrating the tools that we have. Um, there's two toolbars on the ViewSonic board. Um, there's this toolbar that you see down here at the bottom. And then there's a toolbar up here. So the one that we're going to be focusing on right now is this toolbar down here at the bottom. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch my slides. Um, I have a table on the other side that we're going to work from, and we're going to see how, how we like that. So the first button I'm going to press is this button right here. And this is what allows me to change my slides back and forth or to add more slides. So I'm going to tap on that, and then I'm gonna to go to slide two. So here's our second slide. All right, so we're gonna talk about the different tools and what they do, and then description. I probably won't actually write out a full description, uh, but this is something that you could do on your end. Um, and I don't, and I'm not 100% sure that these symbols have official names. So I kind of give them names, but I actually screenshotted all of them to see um, if that helps the process. So. Uh, what, what I have learned about using the viewboard is the more you use it, the easier it gets, uh, which shouldn't be surprising to anybody who uses technology. Um, now I just kind of do things without even thinking about them. So I'll try to speak my procedure aloud as we go. 
So the first symbol that you should know about is the hand. Um, and the reason why is sometimes the hand, um, you feel like you should be able to select things with it, but that's not actually um, what it does. The hand, and if I use my mouse, I can actually hover over the hands down here on the toolbar. So the hand is moving the canvas and previewing the whole area of the canvas. So it's not actually a selection tool. So if I go to tap on things, when I have the, let's see, go back, back, back. When I'm on the hand and I go to select on things, it doesn't actually select anything. But if I use two hands or two fingers, um, I can make my screen smaller or bigger. I can also accidentally move things out of the way. So that's what the hand does. Now, the way that we can prevent the hand from moving things that we want to stay locked is by locking things. So um, one of the cool things about the ViewSonic Viewboard is it has something called Infinite Canvas. Infinite Canvas. And the way that you activate the infinite canvas is with the hand tool. So I've got all of this stuff on here, but now I want more writing space. I can use the hand to activate infinite canvas to make everything smaller. And then I can continue writing over here on the side. So that's what infinite canvas does. Um, if I don't want something to be resized when I, when I zoom it in or zoom it out, then that is also an option that I can use by, by locking it. And I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a second. So I'm going to put it back to hand and I'm going to see if I can get it back to 100%. I'm going to move it down. So anything that's not locked will be moved by the hand. So if you feel like it's doing something that you don't want it to do, that's fine. I think this is actually bigger than it needed to be. So we're just going to make it fit. There we go. And then I'm going to erase my infinite canvas thing. All right. So that's the first one. Um, the first is the hand tool. And the hand tool, again, does uh, moving the canvas and previewing. So let's write, let's see if I can make this work. I'm using the ta a table for the first time. Uh, this is new for me, so, um, so bear with me here. Okay, um, so preview, move canvas. All right, so that is actually the perfect segue to our next tool. Our next tool is the pen tool, which is the one I've been using to write. And it is um, the tool that looks like a pen. So when I tap on that, that's what activates the pen. And we're going to pull this over, move these out of the way so they're not underneath this table. Uh, come on, friend. There we go. All right. So the one that we're going to talk about now is this pen tool. And this is something new that I've been messing with on the table is it'll actually resize um, the cell to hold whatever you're adding. Um, so the next one is the pen tool. And the pen tool does a couple of different things. It's down here at the bottom. When I tap on it, you'll see it's a marker. It's got all of these different colors. Once I select a color, it'll actually give me an extended change range of that color. Right now I've got it on blue. I can change the width or the thickness of my pen. I can also change the opacity. So if I want it to be um, more of a transparent color, I can do that. So that's how the pen tool works. Um, my other options are, let me make this opaque again. Um, my other options are I can use uh, the, the pen brush. The only difference between the pen brush and the pen is the shape. So the pen brush is more of an oval where the marker is a true circle. So it actually makes circle dots, um, which I've used that before. And then the pen brush is more of an oval shape. The next one is the highlighter. The highlighter naturally has um, a, a set opacity. So if I'm highlighting over stuff, it's automatically going to stay that semi-transparent color. And if I double it, it's not going to get any darker. So it's gonna maintain that transparency as I, as I work with the highlighter tool. The next one is called the laser pen. 
the laser pen is uh, temporary. So if I start drawing with the laser pen, and then I tap again, it's going to disappear. So if you need something with a temporary highlight that will then go away, that's what the laser pen's for. The next one is the shape pen, and this is really cool because you can add your own shapes to this. You're not stuck with just the ones that they use. Um, so you can choose, there's the ViewSonic Bird, or Ladybug, or Heart, and then when I tap it, then it drops it in. So I use this a lot with lower elementary and math examples if I need five of something then I can tap five. I can also drag it and it'll do this. So you can imagine how every kindergartner in the world uh, loves that tool. And then by using my eraser, I can erase all of those things. Um, and then the last one is the magic line pen. Um, I believe this one, you can also add um, different shapes to this. So. If I tap on this and then I start drawing, it's going to, it's almost like it's uncovering it from the background. Um, so that's something else that you can use and you can customize that as well. So, um, so that is how the pen tool works. You've got six different options there. Probably the most common one that you'll use is either the marker or the pen brush, and then you've got the highlighter, laser pen, and then the stamps. I actually like to call the, the shape pen the stamp, uh, but you can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, so let's move this back in so it's better for writing. Um, so we're going to put, oh, that is not quite thin enough. There we go. Multi tool. Uh, pen slash marker. Okay. Um, the next one that we're going to talk about is the eraser. Um, there's not, um, let's see, so let's grab this guy, stick him over there. Um, so the eraser is, you think it's just an eraser, right? Actually, no, there's a lot of different things that you can do with the eraser. So let me draw some stuff over here. Okay, sorry, Tara just asked me a question. So I'm gonna finish talking about the eraser and then I'm gonna answer that question. Um, so the, uh, the eraser has a couple of different options. Um, you can just do the regular eraser, which is a circle, and you can change how big or how thin it is. You can also use um, the selector tool to erase a selected area or as you're erasing, if you put your whole hand on the viewboard, it'll turn into like a big eraser. So if I'm just using a fine finger with the erase with the eraser, it'll just be this circle. But if I put my whole hand on the board, it'll do a big eraser, a big swipe like that. Okay, so the question I got was, your toolbar doesn't look like mine. That could be, um, does not have the toolbar like yours. How do I get those other tools? So I am using the software called My Viewboard, Michelle. And uh, if we have anybody from ViewSonic on, they might be able to help you change um, or explain the difference. Um, there's an older version of the software. I believe it's called, uh, I think it's called 3.1. Um, I am actually not super familiar with that software. The only thing that I use is the My Viewboard which gives us these tools here. So we have a large ViewSonic board in our office with a slot PC in the back. Um, and then this is the this is the software that we use. So when I minimize my screen a little bit, you can see I have this black or this uh, maroon cloud over here that says my view board. If you're using something else, your toolbars are going to look a little different. And I don't even know if I can show you that. I'm afraid that if I get off of this screen, if I go to the, the native screen, that it won't record it. Um, but Michelle, we can talk later if you want um, to figure out maybe it's a different software that you're using. So um, mine is the My View Board software. That's a great question, especially if it looks different. Um, and I know even if the tools look a little different, most of the tools, even in the older software, are similar. Um, they may just have a different icon. So hopefully that helps. Let me know. Um, let's see. Okay, so that is the 
eraser tool. So we're gonna type that in. While we're typing that in, I can actually demonstrate um, the text tool. So there's a couple of different ways to write on the viewboard. Um, oh, good. I just saw Ryan uh, says, Michelle, we're updating my viewboard. That's awesome. Hey, great. Um, okay, so the next tool that we have is the text tool, and there's actually two of them. So you've got the T, and then you have the A, and I'm gonna explain the difference between the two. So the first one, we're gonna start with the T. So if I wanna write into something, all I have to do is press the T, which is down here on the bottom. Sorry, my pen's really thick again. Keep forgetting that I messed with that. There we go. So there is the T. So when I select on that, wherever I tap onto the screen, it's going to create a text box and then I can move it when I'm done. So we're going to type in eraser. Oh, I forgot to change my font color to black. Let's see. There we go. That's what I wanted. So we actually want that to be clear and that to be black. Okay, now let's type. Um, eraser, perfect. And then I'm gonna change the size to be a little bit smaller. Sorry, I have to highlight it first. There we go. I can also change the font, the justification, how it's how it's put in there. So I've got lots of choices there. But when I hit that, and then I can click on this. And so it's actually going, you see those red lines? That's actually the text box wanting to be put inside of this space. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that. And it's gonna auto change the shape of the table, which again, sorry, working with the table, it's something new for me. Um, so there's the eraser, uh, the text for the eraser. Um, that's this T down here at the bottom. The other way that I can add text is with the script tool. So the regular T is this one here. The script tool looks like this. And the script tool is really, really neat. Um, and it actually works well for me, um, surprisingly, even with my handwriting being a little on the messy side. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm going to make my font thinner again to make sure I've got enough space. And then I'm gonna make sure that the A is tapped. So if I tap it, I can switch back and forth between the text box and, yes, I know that you're sharing. Thank you for letting me know again. There we go. Um, I can tap back and forth between the text box and if I hover over it, you can see with my mouse typing or handwriting text. So I, it'll have those two options. So to do the handwriting version, I make sure that the A is selected and then I can do um, multi-function eraser. All right, now you'll notice that it doesn't do anything. That's because you have to let the text feature know when you're done writing. And this, I really appreciate. They made this update uh, probably about two months ago. I would start writing and then I would pause for a half a second and then it would auto script or it would auto change it and I wasn't ready. <laughs> so now you have to let the viewboard know that you're ready. So if you look down on the bottom right hand side, uh, bottom left hand side, you'll see, um, oh, cut rid of it. Uh, so look down here in that direction and then I'll do it again. So multi-function eraser. So let's see, cause that was a little messy. Let's see what happens. That's not bad, look at that. So once I tap that button, that's when it switches the text from the script to the handwriting. And you'll notice if you don't tap that button, it will erase your text. So that's a really good thing to know. Now, what if I wanna change the size of this? It's not, you know, it's too big for that space. All I have to do is tap my selector, which is the square with the arrow. And then I can tap the text and I can change the size of it. So I can go through the steps of tapping, highlighting everything, 
and changing the size that way, or I can just tap the box and I can change the size of the box. And if I pull it and highlight it like that, there it goes. It's automatically gonna put itself into, um, into my table. Any questions about the text tool? You've got two options. You have the um, you have the make a text box and change it around, or you have the the script to text tool. So we'll use the script to text tool one more time. Make sure that your A is tapped. Um, you can't do this from the marker. You have to have the script to text tool selected for it to work. Um, so uh, we can do. text box for script to text. And then I'm gonna touch my little button over here. And there we go. Now I wanna change it, I wanna make it smaller. So I'm gonna choose my selector tool. I'm gonna tap on that text box, gonna make it smaller, and then I'm going to fit it into that box. So now it fits perfectly. And then I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take these two and I'm going to group them together, which is that, nope, not that tool. Uh, which one is grouping? I should know this. Sorry. How do you add a table? I will show you that in just a second. Group that. It is that one. Okay. So I'm going to group these together. Let's see, let's highlight these. Group. There we go. And then I'm going to pull these over here. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to add this text really quickly and then I will show you how to add a table because we're actually out of space. So that's perfect. So I'm going to add my text here. Um, we're going to do the text script to text again. Um, text. Perfect. And that's actually the perfect size. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna add a slide and I'm gonna take all of the images that we haven't talked about and I'm gonna move them to the next slide. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add that next slide. So how we add a slide is down here at the bottom. You guys see where it says number two. Um, so with my selection tool, when I tap on that, it's gonna show you the two slides that I have. To add a new slide, I just tap the little page with the plus sign and it's gonna give me a brand new blank slide. I'm going to come back over here. I could do two things. I could either start fresh. I can also copy this slide. I'm going to start fresh. You guys can see how to do this. Um, so the first thing I want to do, and this is kind of a little bit more of an advanced step, but I find it incredibly useful. I want these tools to come with me. So your mouse or your mouse pointer is all controlled by this right here. Um, single finger lasso and multi finger gestures. This is the one that I come to the most often is this tool right here down at the bottom. So with that tool selected, I'm going to capture these and then I'm going to use the copy feature. So the one that has the double page, this is the copy feature. So I'm going to tap that. So my selected objects have been copied and then I'm going to go back to that screen that I um, made earlier, the new, uh, blank one. And then over here on the left hand side, there's a little clipboard. This is how you paste from your clipboard. So when I click on this, all of those images are going to paste that I was using on the other screen. So now we need to add a new table. So the table feature is going to be the next one that we talk about. It's going to be this one right here, which can be found right here. And it may look different depending on what you have selected. So you'll see that here in just a second. So when I tap the table, and I tap it again, there we go, it's actually the shape tool. So this is where all of our shapes live. And you'll notice that I have two different kind of table options. I have this four square, and I have all these shapes. I have draw my own polygon. Again, I can change the thickness and the color and all of that. So if I wanted to create a stop sign, I could. It's automatically going to add things um, if I want to add them, like the um, like the degrees and the angles. Um, so I can turn those on and off, which is really great. Um, I can add these show segments, um, show in circle. 
So I show out circles. You've got a lot of different things that you can do with these math tools. And they've actually increased those features recently to be able to turn them on and off automatically. I can autofill this to give it a color. Um, I can change the thickness. I can layer these things. I can lock them, erase them. So lots of different options. But in that option, too, is this table feature right here. And so in the table feature, I can choose um, how many columns and how many rows that I want. So the last one that I did was a three by five, I believe. So if I count over three and I count down, let's see how many do I have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll just do again a five by three. And then I, oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. Table, black. There we go. Perfect. So I had to drag my pen across it to make it work. Right, and so here's my table. And I can move it over. And then to make it bigger or smaller, um, it keeps wanting to go back to that thing, doesn't it? When I have the selection tool selected and I tap on it, you can see I have the ability to change the shape. Um, so if I have it on this, I can change the whole size. If I just, if I touch the side, there we go. That's how I get my error to change a specific column or a specific row. Um, so that's how you add a table. The other things that you can do with tables are um, if I select inside a specific row, um, I can change the color, I believe, of just that cell. Oh, no, that changed everything. Um, I saw it earlier. I was able to check, uh, change the color of a specific cell. Don't remember exactly how I got there. Table. Hmm. Not quite sure. There we go. Um, that's OK. I won't dwell on it too long. All right, so let's keep going. So that's this tool right here. That's the shape tool. So we're going to put that there. We're going to write, we're just going to use our marker. Um, yeah, we're just going to use our marker. So shape tool. Um, the shape tool, again, has lots of different features. I can add different polygons. I can add different lines and different um, angles. Um, and then I can also add a table. So with each one of these, you've got a lot of different choices. Um, the polygon shape, I can add I want to say you can add that work. No, maybe I'm doing that one wrong. I think I am. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with that one, but um, there should this should allow you to create your own shape. Maybe not. I'm probably doing it wrong. That does happen from time to time. Okay, so let's go back to this. We've got our shape tool. Nope. There we go. So shape. Multi-function shapes and lines. Okay. Make that a little bigger. Although as soon as I put a new shape in there, it's gonna change it. That's fine. All right my eraser tool to erase the circle that I'm now done with. Okay, so the other one that we talked about um, briefly was this, this button right here. So this button is not on the main toolbar. It's actually um, down here on this toolbar. So this one right here, that's your paste from clipboard. So if you are copying something, that's where your paste button is. So if I wanted to copy these shapes again, I would highlight them. I could hit the copy button, which is right next to the scissors. And then to paste it, I would select that paste tool, paste from clipboard. And it's gonna add all of those um, shapes that were on the clipboard. If I'm just doing one, then it would just do one. So that is really helpful to know. That's when I always forget because it's kind of over there off to the side. Paste, um, paste from clipboard. 
Okay, um, the next one is actually how I created all of these screenshots to begin with. Um, that's this tool right here. So this tool is what allows you to take screenshots or to record from your viewboard. And I love that it's completely built in. And you guys will notice as I'm selecting on these images, I have all of these options over here. So I can flip, I can change where it's located. The lock tool that we were talking about earlier is right here, the one that looks like a padlock. Um, I can add links to these images. So if I've got like six different things that I want my students to explore on the viewboard, I can add links from outside. Um, I can crop the images. So earlier my screenshots weren't completely perfect. And so I kind of um, cropped them to make them look better. Um, but this is the screenshot tool. That's actually how I created all of these images um, to begin with. So what I did is down here at the bottom, there's the screenshot tool. It kind of looks like a camera shutter. Um, and when I select it, it gives me this toolbar right here. So I can um, take a picture of the whole screen. That's what the first option is. The section, a second option is to lasso the part of the screen that I want. Um, the third option is to select a large square or rectangle of exactly what I want. And then the last one is to record. Um, I think the record feature is probably one of my favorites. If you're doing a complicated explanation, math, science, reading, whatever, um, your view board is capable of recording that session. So not only do I have a camera on here, and I can turn that on in a second so you can see it, I can also automatically screencast from my view board. So I think that is incredibly helpful, um, especially when you're talking about capturing what you're explaining to your class so that they can watch it later. So to do a screen, uh, to do a, a clip of just a little screenshot, I would um, select the, I'm gonna use the third option, the one with the two plus signs on it. And then you're gonna see my screen's gonna turn um, kind of a grayish color. That's letting me know that it's ready for me to select. Um, so what was one of the ones that I didn't do? Oh, this one, we'll highlight this one right here. So I'm gonna highlight my selection tool. There we go. And then it's going to add it onto my screen and it kind of tucked it over here off to the side. So I'm gonna pull it over here. And then when I tap on it, I can make it bigger, smaller, do a bunch of different things with it. So that's the screenshot tool, um, our screen capture tool. So let's write that in there, screen capture. I feel like I'm writing this for all of them. It's a multi-function screen capture tool. Um, multi-function screen shot and screen cast. Um, and you'll notice this little, this little scribble that came down here. I have on a sweater um, and the view board is, it is more than just a touch screen. It bases it off of um, multiple points of touch. So if you've got on like really dangly bracelets or a really loose and flowy sweater, um, it might, um, it might engage the screen in ways that you aren't ready for. So that's where that's coming from. Um, okay, any questions so far? You guys are doing awesome hanging in there with me. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other features. Um, again, basic features, but once you understand what everything does, it makes it really easy. Um, so the next one that I wanna cover is, um, oh, here we go. Is there a way to calibrate the screen? I created a lesson on my view board and when I try to use the pen to annotate my text and tables, it doesn't line up with my pen. Yes, Angie, there is a way to calibrate. I do notice myself that I have to be, I can't really write at an angle um, if I'm kind of standing to the left or to the right. It does better if I'm standing um, kind of like face to the board. Um, but yes, I know there's a way to calibrate. There has to be. Um, I don't know specifically how to do that, but we will make sure that we get somebody to you so we can. If there's anybody from ViewSonic watching, um, if you could hop on and let Angie know or email me after this and I will, um, I'll make sure that you get that answer. Um, yeah, that would be, that would be not good if it didn't line up, but I know there's a way to fix that. I'm sure it's somewhere in settings. Um, 
Okay, so the other thing that we're going to, let's see, which one do we want to do? Let's go with this one. We're gonna talk about the N Chrome browser and then because the next two kind of go together. So this is the N, um, this is the browser that is inside a viewboard. So I could minimize and open up Chrome or open up um, Internet Explorer, whatever browser I like to use. Um, and I can go that way, or without even leaving the application, I can open up the um, in-program browser. And this is kind of what it looks like. So I'm already logged into my Google Drive that we use for the Viewboard trainings. Um, so you'll notice I have two tabs open. I have my drive and I have YouTube, but I can open up multiple tabs. I have the option, so I have some similar options here. I can draw, I can do my laser pen, I can erase. I can screen capture just inside that browser. Um, there's also some, some general bookmarks um, that Viewboard gives us on the, on the main page. So you've got all of these options here. Um, it's easy to integrate if you're using Microsoft or Google. So I've got my drive hooked up. So let's say I wanted to open up something that I've been using on my drive. Um, I can, let's see. So if I've got this, um, here is one of the activities that we've done before. Um, so without even leaving, I have this right here. I don't have to go back and forth. So um, let's see. Let's say I want my students to work on uh, the punctuation game. Okay, so this is talking about the four different types of sentences, and I want my students to work on this one right here. So I can do present, and even more so, got it, um, down here at the bottom, and I'm gonna use my mouse so you guys can see where I'm pointing. I have right next to the screen capture button, there's these squares and a plus sign. What it does is it makes the current web page become a tool. So when I select that, it gives me a, um, a simplified version. And then when I hit present, it just lessens the toolbar. So now inside of my lesson without leaving, I have this right here. So and I think if I remember correctly, I can draw on top of it. No, it draws behind it. Um, so if I want to be able to draw inside of it, then I have to be in this mode. But right here, I can hit pen and I can pen orange. So um, the sky is very cloudy. This is a, I even forget what they were. What is that? Uh, um, this is a blank type of sentence. And then they would put um, their period next to it. So um, the other thing that you can do with this that I love is if I have a, let's get rid of that. If I have a YouTube video you write anything that I want my students to watch, I can, I believe this is where I do it. Let's see. I haven't done this in a while, so patience, please. So I believe from this screen, if I grab the video, I can actually drag it onto my viewboard. Yes, like that. Just like that. And that's something really cool that you can do just with YouTube. Um, and so now I can tuck this over here on the side, or I can even put it in a different um, in a different window. And now I have this YouTube video playing as my students are working. So that's fun. Pause, um, and then I can exit out of that when I'm done. So that's what this one is. Let's see. Uh, browser. So in program browser. And there's some really neat little tricks that you can do if you're building a view board slide deck that contained all the things that you need for a lesson and you needed to go out to Google Classroom or to OneNote or whatever you're using you can have all of those things kind of already in there. So the last two that we're gonna talk about are 
um, very similar. So I've got the open box and then I have the file. So the open box is um, my cloud, my cloud um, access. So if I want to insert a picture or an interactive whiteboard file or a video or a music file, all of those things can be found here. So right now it's on the slot PC. That's what this first one is right here. Um, I can also access my Google Drive. So I've got a couple images there. Um, I can access my sticky notes. This is something that they've just changed around. I also have some, some extra tools and functions. We're not gonna cover any of these today, but these are fun to play around with, the clock, the timer, the calculator, the compass. Um, I also have, um, these images are really fun that you can use um, and they're adding more and more every day. They're also um, animated. Um, and then the last one is our webcam. So when I tap on that, it'll open it up, hi. And then you can see that we have a webcam attached um, to this particular one. So, and it's not attached to the viewboard itself. It's actually a separate camera that rests on top of our viewboard. So sometimes depending on what type of meetings we're having, we'll take that camera and put it down here underneath. So, and then also from here, I can record, I can screen share, I can draw, so I can even draw. Hello, drink. I'm excited to, to partake in my uh, sparkling water as soon as we're done talking. Um, erase, so I have a lot of the similar functions here, um, and then I can also add it to recording. So that's the webcam. Um, if I have an image that I have saved, I can drag that onto my screen, and then here it is. Oh, I didn't want to do that. There we go. Did not want to add it to my table. Um, so there's that. Um, the other way that I can get images, and um, I don't think we're going to cover it today. I don't think we're going to have time. Um, you can actually have images thrown to you. We've done this in some of our previous webinars. So in the top corner, um, actually, we can get rid of that picture. There we go. Um, in the top corner up here, you'll notice I've got a couple different options here. The green one, this means that um, I, I am available for receiving and sending of images. So if you were to go to myviewboard.com, you could send me an image. You could also share your screen with me, or I could share my screen with you. So if you're working with a remote student and you want them to be um, involved with the daily class or to see what you're doing, you can send and receive viewboard from this screen right here. Um, if you want to throw an image to me, you can also go to myviewboard.com. The viewboard name is Edtechteam Training. Um, and then that would come through, um, sorry, not that one. I would get notifications here that those pictures had been thrown. Um, and then to add those pictures, I would go to the box and then you see the, um, the throw, the paper airplane, that's where that's from. So, um, and then the last image, so that is, and I don't, forgive me, I don't even remember what that guy is called, importing any resource. So we're just gonna call that the resource box. Resource, um, importing, resources. Now, if you want to import a view board that you've created, or you want to save the current view board that you're working on, that's what this one's for. That's your file. <clears throat> so if I select the file, um, I have all of these options here. I can create a new one. I can save the current one. Or sorry, I can open one. That's what the one with the file is. I can save. I can save as. Um, and I believe that means export, and then I can print. So if I want to save, I'm hoping that means that it saved it. I'm actually gonna hit save as, just to double check. So I'm gonna hit save as, oh, that's, here we go, and I'm gonna save it to my Google Drive. So before it was saved to my slot PC, I'm gonna save it to my Google Drive this time. And so down here it's named, it's a .vboard file. You can see some of the other ones that I've done in the past. Um, and then I'm gonna hit my check mark, 
it'll upload. And now when I'm all done and I come back, it should all be there. So let's say I were to accidentally get out of this. Yes. So I'm out of my view board now and I want to open it back up again. I would open up my view board. And the way that I log in is by using my phone. So I have the app on my phone. And all I have to do is hit the QR code button and scan this QR code on my screen. I know you guys aren't seeing that, I'm sorry. Um, and then it automatically logs me in. So it's actually really easy to get logged in. I don't have to type in my login. Okay, so where did my presentation go? If I go down here to the file and I go to open, and I go to my drive, it should be there. And let's hope it saved itself. Um, yep, there it goes. And there's everything that I had in there. So um, that's how you would open up a saved view board. So this one's actually on the smaller side because all it is is some images and some typing, but you can see that they get, they can get much bigger. So, all right, um, any questions? We've been rocking for about 50 minutes now. This is about the time when people stop paying attention. So if you have any remaining questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, we're gonna wrap up. I'll give you guys a couple minutes. Um, oh, you know what? While we're seeing if we can get, I let my watch just told me to stand up. I've been standing up this whole time, friend. Um, I'm gonna add a new page just so I can show you this one more thing. Um, over here, and the bottom left hand corner this is where i can change the backdrop of my entire screen so when i select that you'll notice i have things that have been added um, to my viewboard account i can change just the basic color i can add a photo these are all photos that were already put in there um, so scale music or this like paper background chess all these game boards um, I love that the football one is the first one. Um, I can also go to things that are, that are in my PC um, or add custom backgrounds from my, from my background. So let's say I were to do this one here, apply to this page. So I have this background that I've created. I would probably use it more as an image, not as a background, um, but it is something that I could use this way. And now we can talk about whatever timeline with my students. I'm going to use my eraser to get rid of my line over here. There we go. I can use my text tool. So 1776 question mark. And then I can keep going. 1492 question mark. Two thousand eight question mark, and then I can ask my students to um, to tell me what happened during those dates. Well, and obviously the dates are out of order. So uh, let's see. Let's move those in the correct order. Tap those. And move those over. Um, what I love about the view board is, of course, it can be teacher demonstrative, right? I'm up here demonstrating. Um, but let's say I wanted each one of my groups in my class to work on this board. Um, I can give them their own space very easily. Um, when I tap on the four, which is telling me how many, what slide I'm on, um, if I hit the, the double page um, icon, on that page right here in the top corner, this one right here, this will copy this page to a new page. So let's say I have four groups. So now I have this four different times. So the only one thing that I would do, of course, is I would make sure to put on here um, group one. So probably not in that color. I would probably choose a darker color or a brighter color. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. So one of my assignments for my students could be come in and fill in the empty spaces. Um, and then they could even tap that record button and record themselves explaining it and then have that be turned in as their work. So. Lots of different ways. We should probably do a webinar just for student interaction. How can we 
create more student interaction with the view boards or some examples for those activities. What we really try to focus on for this very first one is just getting you familiar with all of these tools and making sure that you understand um, how to do different things. The one mistake that I made the most probably when I first got started was trying to use this hand tool when what I really wanted to use was my selector tool. So I think that's about all we have for today. Um, do we have any final questions? I don't think we do. I know Tara put my email address um, in the chat, um, but I'm also going to write it here for you. So my email is amanda at edtechteam.com. Um, about an hour after this video, you're going to get an email from me with a copy or a link rather to this YouTube presentation. Um, I'll also, um, it'll be a part of the playlist for all of the ViewSonic webinar. And each one of them while we cover similar information is a little bit different. So if you have any questions about anything I showed you here today, feel free to reach out to me, amanda at edtechteam.com. And again, you'll have this video that you can watch um, later if you wanna go back and reference something. So if we don't have um, any other questions, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. We thank you guys for watching today and for being involved. We thank you for your, um, your introductions. Uh, we have lots of people from all over the place, Ryan and Kristen and Amy um, and Michelle um, and Angie. So Angie, Angie, hopefully we can get your question answered. Um, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. I think I have your registration information. So if that's, if, if there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and sign off. I'm going to, let's see, where is my, there we go. I can turn this back on. Okay, awesome. We thank you guys for joining us. We really appreciate your time being here today. Um, and if you need anything, just let us know. Have a good night. Bye.